there was an article that I was checking out and let me see if I can pull it up. Let me see if I can pull it up. There was an article that I was checking out and I, you know, I'm always looking at the business stuff. I'm always looking at the business stuff. So let me share my screen with y'all really quickly. See if I can share my, my screen with y'all. All right. So, um, so this is a news article about Chick-fil-A, right? And in this news article, they're specifically speaking about demand. Now, I would usually reserve this type of type of insight and conversation for my Patreon members, but I thought it'd be important for us to have this conversation and, and, and kind of dive a little bit deeper when it comes to business. I like to add value to y'all, especially even the people that's not a part of the Patreon. I like to show, you know, show y'all love or whatever. But I thought this was pretty interesting and in that they were having a conversation with the CEO of Chick-fil-A right now. Anybody that knows Chick-fil-A, Chick-fil-A does not franchise. Let me say that again. Chick-fil-A does not franchise. So you know how you can buy into a franchise. One of the cheapest franchises that you can buy into a subway. Um, you can get that for cheap, right? You can also buy into McDonald's. And, you know, my wife went through the process for, for a very long time. And they make you go in to do all of the process. And they make you to qualify to show that you have so many millions of dollars on reserve and and um, and assets and liquid assets and things like that. So there's different franchises and requirements to get into certain fields, but Chick-fil-A, Chick-fil-A, if y'all are familiar with it, they do not franchise, right? Chick-fil-A, uh, frames it as though they're franchising, but what they're really doing is, um, getting owner operators, but that's not really an, an owner, right? You have to buy into it. You have to go through all of the training, but there's not a franchising opportunity for you when it comes to Chick-fil-A. But I thought that this article was interesting and that they were saying that anybody that's been to a Chick-fil-A and I've been a couple times taking my daughter. I just tasted a Chick-fil-A sandwich when I was over in uh, Virginia hanging out with Bricks. First time ever tasting Chick-fil-A and it was pretty good. It was pretty good. But Chick-fil-A is a place that dedicates themselves to service. Customer service is their number one thing, not the actual sandwich themselves. Okay. It's customer service. And the CEO was saying that 30% of people drive away because of the chain's drive through lines being too long. What do y'all think about that? What do y'all think about that? 30% of their customers and, and there's other lessons in this conversation also, because one of the things that's interesting about um, what he was saying, I wasn't just looking at the article for what he was saying, but I was also taking into consideration that he understands the data. <laughs> I appreciate it, Shaka. I appreciate it. He understands the data. Right. If you read in between the lines, the very headline of him understanding that 30 percent of people drive away means that he's leaning on the information in order to make informed decisions. That's the thing that's driving their decisions. And that's the difference between people that look at things from a business perspective and people that look at things from face value. We look at stuff and say, oh, man, Chick-fil-A is busy, whatever, so on and so forth. Other people that are in positions of leadership and that understand business, they're looking at things and saying that I need to lean on the data in order to make more informed decisions. So like, for example, me, right? For example, me. Look at this chick. She back. Sierra Fire. We're going to get her up out of here again. Um, we're going to we're not going we're going to we're not going to let her interrupt it. So for me, for example, right? Um. When I get into restaurant businesses and as a silent investor now, because I don't want to run day to day operations, what I've learned is to lean on the information, the data, the statistics. I knew what was going to sell when. Right. I knew that on Sundays that was going to be our busiest day. Because everybody that got out of church was looking for food. It was our busiest day. It was so hard for me to close or any restaurant to shut down because I understood that Sundays was going to be our busiest day ever. Busiest day ever. Also, on top of that, I, would, I knew exactly how many dinners I was going to probably sell on a specific day. 
I knew exactly how many. I knew how much chicken I was gonna sell. I knew how many people ordered sides that came along with it. I knew how many people, what the percentages was of people that ordered, just ordered the meal, like just ordered the actual main and didn't get sides to go along with it. I knew how to upsell. I knew exactly what words to use in order to make sure that people bought dessert to go along with it. I knew that we sold and made more money off of the drinks than we did off of anything else in the in a restaurant. I knew all of that. And so those type of decisions, those that type of information was driving my decision making. It's the thing that helped me to determine exactly how many people I needed to schedule for this day. OK, lunch is going to be busy. But right after that, it was going to be a slow period. So every single thing that I did was was based off of data and information. It wasn't based off of my, my, what, my what I seen. It wasn't based off of my thoughts. It wasn't based off of how I feel. Every single thing that I did was based off of making an informed decision based off of data. So even in looking at this article, if you scroll up and you understand that he's making a, de a decision and saying that 30 percent of people drive away. Right. Because of the lines are so long. And then you combine that with the fact that you had a pandemic that's been going on for an extended period of time. And Chick-fil-A hasn't even really opened up a lot of their dining rooms. Now you start to see things and frame it differently no matter what the conversation is no matter what it is you start to see things and you're making more informed decisions right so let's just get into the meat of it we estimate 30 percent of people driving off drive away because the lines are so long the data shows that chick-fil-a does have longer drive-through lines than its competitors the the chicken chain had the longest wait time out of the 10 quick service chains it's uh, tested at 541 seconds, about nine minutes. That means that when you get in the line to go and get some Chick-fil-A, it's going to take you about nine minutes to get your food. OK, y'all with me? But the long waits don't tell the whole story. Chick-fil-A also came on top for customer service and order accuracy, which tells me that even though a or nearly a third of the people drove away because of the long lines, more people were willing to wait because they actually valued the customer service and order accuracy. They did not mess up their order. OK, I got some other insight for you guys, even after this article It's some things that they didn't even glean out of it. Uh, drive to drive drive through waits have gotten longer over time in 2019. The average speed was 322 seconds. 2020 is 488 seconds or about eight minutes. Uh, weights have nearly doubled since 2019, but customers don't seem to care. The chain was only the chain was the only business to get 100 percent accurate rating in the same survey. Uh, long weights aren't surprising. Chick-fil-A had an average of four cars waiting in any line at any given time, well above the average of 2.2 cars at McDonald's, which was the next highest. If you notice how McDonald's did all of their redesigns, McDonald's now have two drive through lines and they're continuously UXing what it is that they're doing from their restaurant. It's not just about the food. It's about how you do things within the business. This is the reason why I'll always have a job. I'll always be rich. I'll always get to the bag because my background is user experience. Data driven decisions, trying to make the most of understanding. Why do you think, listen, when you go to an application, when you go to an app, watch this. First app I pulled up, the sneakers app. They just, just did a drop this morning. Have you noticed over time they've gotten rid of hamburger menus at the top of the at the top of the thing? It's no longer hamburger. The smart ones are no longer using hamburger menus because when you hold your phone, you holding it like this. It's easier for you to access the menu down here where your thumb is. This is user experience. So now we're tailoring the application experience. Even when you're looking at a website on a mobile device, we're tailoring the application experience to more accurately reflect what it is that users are doing on a regular basis. That's user experience. It's the same thing across the board. When people get in drive through lines, 
when restaurants decide to have two drive through windows, but then you know that they're not running the restaurant correctly because when you go through the drive through only the front drive through window is the one that's open. They don't actually use the first drive through money to take the money. They do them both at the same drive through window. They messing up the user experience. When you see Chick-fil-A, one thing I'm starting to see, I seen a Taco Bell the other day, they're implementing the same principles and policies and customer service that they've been implementing at Chick-fil-A. Now Taco Bell have people out there taking your order before you even get up to the thing. Why do you think that is? Because now the CEO of Taco Bell is starting to make data driven decisions and start a panic instead of just looking at what everybody else is doing. User experience exists in every facet of life. That's why I wouldn't listen. I will always be able to go and get a bag from anywhere because I understand business. And then I also understand user experience to go along with it. All right. So look at this. These wait times are a symptom of Chick-fil-A's massive success. The average Chick-fil-A store does over 4.5 million in annual sales compared to the average McDonald's store with 2.9. Now, let's let's deep dive into this a little bit more and then I want to get into the tax talk. Let's deep dive into this a little bit more. 4.5 million in annual sales versus 2.9 with McDonald's. Now, McDonald's used to be the standard, right? Right? And then you look at what Chick-fil-A is doing and people can't understand. One of the things that I used to get in the restaurant business all the time is, why don't you add this to the menu? Why don't you add that to the menu? Chick-fil-A simplified their menu in order to increase order accuracy. That's the context to that previous, art, that previous sentence that was said. Chick-fil-A increased order accuracy by focusing on customer service and simplifying the menu, you ain't getting nothing but a chicken sandwich, a, a salad, some chicken strips, and some fries, pretty much, from Chick-fil-A. But yet, they're beating everybody else in annual sales. When you simplify the menu, not only can you focus more on customer service, but you have less, you have less likely an opportunity to be able to mess something up because everything is process-driven now. Y'all see what I'm saying? The other thing that's uh, interesting about this article and uh, interesting about what it is that we're looking at from Chick-fil-A is that even though 30% of the people drive away, they're still at capacity. So they don't necessarily lose anything. They're still doing as many sales as they can possibly do. But then also they've input into you a scarcity mindset. It's the same reason why. Uh, people want people that is already taken. You want the thing that everybody else wants. If you walk out, if y'all walk through and y'all walking through Miami, right? Spent four months in Miami straight all over the winter. And you know what the, the places that got the most buzz was the places that had the longest lines. It's strategic that club owners, I know a lot of business owner club owners, right? It's strategic why they let you or they hold off and letting people in and they want that line to get longer. And it's not necessarily because they had capacity, it's because they're trying to drum up interest as to why other people are interested in going to this place. If you see a long line, then you start paying attention and saying, oh man, that's the place that I might, might wanna be at. It's the same thing with Chick-fil-A. It's a scarcity mindset. The, and, and they want to get you more, but they don't want to get you so much to where it does not create a demand by presenting itself to be something that everybody else wants. I want to operate at capacity, but I don't want to place myself in a position to where I don't get as many sales as I could have could have had. I'm willing to let 30 percent walk away if I can increase my sales by 60 percent. You understand? You understand what I'm saying? Or is this too deep for y'all? Is this too deep for y'all? Why do people still think that diamonds are valuable? How come then when I buy my Rolex is they're worth more than if somebody was to take it and bust it down with a bunch of diamonds, no matter how great the quality of the diamonds are. Why do you think that diamonds, why do you think that they have a huge reserve, but they're presenting it to you as though there's a scarcity in diamonds. They hold back the amount of diamonds that they make available to the general public, because if they flooded the market and just tried to capitalize off as many sales as they can get, it would be less. Less desired, slower in sales. 
think about the auto industry. I'm just teaching y'all a whole lesson a night or today. I'm teaching you a whole lesson a day. Think about the auto industry, right? One of the things that old auto executives didn't understand, and this is the reason why they pay me so much money in the executive ranks. Let's be clear. I know what the piss I'm talking about. I know business, all right? The reason why they pay me so much money. The reason why auto companies went bankrupt The reason why auto companies went bankrupt wasn't just because there was a shortage in sales. They were doing greater sales than they ever had before, but they had to discount their cars so much in order to do so. Now, pay attention to what's going on in 2021. It happened outside of their purview. It happened without them even being able to subject themselves to it, but it was a blessing in disguise. When I went and bought my Porsche, the guy at the dealership, my good friend of mine, he just built a million dollar garage over at the M1 racing track. We was over there in, in August and then we did it in 2020 when during the pandemic we was racing Porsches. It was one of the reasons why I got interested in it in the first place, right? When I was talking to him, he said, Anton, I'm going to get you your Porsche, but the dealers in California is paying $50,000 $50, over sticker. Your Porsche was probably going to cost you $230,000. They paying $50,000 over sticker. Porsche has always regularly as an automaker, look it up. Porsche has always had the widest margins of profitability than any other automaker. Other automakers were so focused on volume and Porsche was always focused on quality, the quality of the sale. I don't have to make a million sales. I can do 20, 30,000 as long as the profit margins are are large. So now what you see happening with the semiconductor shortage is that there's less availability of cars and so the prices go up, which means that the automakers can sell less cars and make a greater profit. They're still hugely profitable, but they don't have to discount their cars or have them sitting on dealer lots for 90, 100, and 120 days because there's a scarcity mindset now. Tesla mastered it. Tesla said, we're not even going to have the dealership. Not only are we going to have you order it online and deliver it. Are y'all paying attention? Not only are we going to have you order online and deliver it, we're going to to get the middleman up out of there because everybody do things online. Tesla comparing themselves not to other auto companies, but to other technology companies. They decided to do their user experience based off of things that were outside of whatever the traditional thing was doing. So when you go to start your business, stop paying attention to other boutiques, stop paying attention to other e-commerce platforms, pay attention to it, but don't use that as the basis by which you innovate your platform. There's other things that you can pull in in order to continue to grow the business, to make yourself more successful. And then Tesla said, we're going to do pre-ordering. So we know exactly what the what the demand is. We can create a a scarcity mindset. And then we can also prevent ourselves from having a discount. Have y'all been paying attention to finance news? Tesla is raising the prices every single month. A thousand, fifteen hundred, two thousand dollars. They raising the prices on their cars because they can get more for selling the same product with a scarcity mindset. You know why Rolexes are such in high demand? Because they don't make them like G-Shocks. Not only is the quality of the watch great, but the fact that you can't get one continues to raise the... Less is more. Sometimes less is more. It's the same thing when it comes to your relationships. If If every single thing you do is... I want to have some, I want to get some, I want to get some. If you say no sometimes or you make yourself less available or you go to work sometimes, she's going to want you more. Scarcity mindset extends across all platforms. The fact that you see those long lines and you know it's going to take you some time to get that that Chick-fil-A is one of the very things that continues to interest you in Chick-fil-A. And then you see that the customer service is phenomenal and now you're willing to wait over and over and over again, even though your time is money because they've built up this equity of, squ- of, of a scarcity mindset and a great product, even if it's not necessarily any better than anywhere else. Same chicken. And the, pla- and, and the chicken strips and in the, the freaking uh, sandwich, it's the same chicken. Why do you pay more for one purse over the other? Think about it. 
if I raise the prices on this specific product, you'll will, you're willing to pay for it a lot more because you know that everybody else can't get it. If everybody had the exact same thing that you had, it wouldn't be as valuable to you. It wouldn't be as valuable to you. I'm telling you the truth. The fact that it's not as available. Why do you think that when Lamborghini, man, I could talk business all day. I'm going to have to switch it and get over to this tax talk. Why do you think that Lamborghini, when they released this new uh, Lamborghini, Lamborghini Countach, why do you think that they're only releasing, what is it, 529 of them? Why do you think that they only release a limited amount of pairs of ones every Saturday of, of lows, dunk lows. And then they, they'll release the Jordans and then the Yeezys will come out and you got to get on the waiting list and you can get in the draw, but you might not get it. Ah, you didn't get it this time. Why do you think that Jordans retros took off so hard years ago? They, they figured out that the scarcity mindset is the way in which they can market themselves to you more effectively. They're not teaching you this in school. They're not teaching you this in business school. They're not teaching you this across the Internet. They're just giving you regurgitated information, but they're not teaching you how to think differently about business. It's a difference. You have to start to evaluate why you do what you do, and that's going to drive the decisions as to whether or not it makes sense for you to be able to get in a specific market or whether or not you should make a, a business decision. There's a reason why they built certain gas stations on highways without any kind of competition. And those gas stations are much more profitable than than dense cities. Have you thought about it? Have you thought about it? If anybody has ever bought into a franchise, I have plenty of friends in a franchising business. You know that. One of the reasons why Chick-fil-A's and McDonald's are so much more profitable, not the only reason, but one of the reasons why it's so much more profitable and why the barrier to entry to get into these franchises are so much higher and why they're able to guarantee better results is because they can guarantee that there won't be another one like you within a certain mile range or distance or radius of your restaurant. Whereas when you go and you buy a subway, you're going to get a subway in the, in the, in the Walmart and then it's going to be one down the street and then it's going to be one down on the, on the college campus. It's subways like this. Chick-fil-A's, you got to drive to go and get to those. Think about it. Start paying attention. When you see these articles come out, I want y'all to start to, to look at your business finances and start the first thing in your morning. Don't go to the shade room. Don't go to the, the Gossip Girls website. Don't go to TMZ. Don't go to any of that crap. Look at the business stuff and start training your mind to start look at things differently. Start looking at marketing, business, finance. Start looking at it differently. Why do you think that the U.S. Treasury burns up money? And they're trying to control inflation. Why do you think that they're controlling the circulation of dollars? Dollars only the only value that that money has is the value that we give it the belief, our belief in it. That's why fiat currency is trash, because the minute that the people reject it, inflation goes out of control and then it loses its value, which is why I don't live with any kind of cash available. The only thing that I put my, my, my money in is tangible assets because those assets will continue to appreciate with whatever the inflation is. As a matter of fact, it's going to continuously beat the rate of inflation. Are y'all paying attention? Are y'all part of the Patreon yet? Let me, uh, let me drop this link in it because I cook, I cook, I talk this talk. I don't have talking points anywhere in here. I don't have a whiteboard. I don't have talking points on my computer or anything like that. I just talk my talk because I understand business because I've trained my mind to look at things a little bit differently as far as how it is that I choose to get into a business specifically. All right. If you're going to start a shoe company, let me help you all out. Let me help you all out. I'm gonna give you all some business advice. If you're going to start a shoe company or a start a shoe resale company, don't do it the same way that everybody else is doing. Don't go on eBay. Don't start doing it on StockX. Do it a little bit differently. 
do a little bit differently. Let me tell you what you do. First of all, there's multiple different ways to make money in the shoe business. I'm not about to give y'all all of that. I'm not about to give y'all all of that. I'm not about to. You're going to have to join the Patreon. You're going to have to join the gang. That's the conversation that I'm going to start within um, within the uh, the Discord. I'll start a new. I'll, I'll create a, a conversation in the small business thread on the Discord within the, the Patreon group. And we're going to talk about the shoe business. And I'm going to give y'all all the gang. Matter of fact. I'll, maybe I'll drop multiple videos a day in the Patreon as far as the Patreon exclusives to help y'all to get level up. I don't want to hold no game back. I got so much game. It, my head is literally just exploding with different things and concepts that y'all need to be able to get into to level up. So shout out to my Patreon members. Um, I want y'all to start looking at things differently. I want y'all to start looking at money differently.